Before we dig into part two, I just want to say thank you for the support. I had no idea the last video was going to blow up like it did. I want to thank you guys for your patience. And if you haven't seen the first video and you're finding this video first, please go back and watch part one. It's how this whole thing started. Now, where were we? All right, so we are on our daily camera checking routine where we're checking the trail cams and one's missing. I just bought that one too. So it was up in this tree and now it's not. Look around and see if you see it. I don't know, maybe it fell off. Yeah, no, it did not. Well, that's great. Let's go check the other cameras. Oh my God. No, man. Dude. They're probably gone. Oh God, please say they're not gone. Oh, oh God, there's one. Yeah, that's interesting. Looks like somebody took the module out of it. That's fan. Nope, here it is. There's that. And here is the module. Great. Maybe this caught something. Battery's low. Okay, hold that. Did you get the laptop? Not today. Yes. Okay. All right, well, thank God for that. Let's see what's on this. Can you hold this? There's probably some kids or something. I'm going to see right now. Okay, let's pull the SD card out. What did that even sound like? I don't know. Okay, let's go. I'm getting a little paranoid. Okay, I'm gonna go home and better inspect this video. What I discovered on that trail cam scared me. Whatever it was was definitely an animal. From what I can make of it, it looks like a deer but it definitely does not sound like a deer. And how is a deer able to push a tiny button on the trail cam to pop the modular out? I watched that video probably a hundred times and couldn't make any sense of it. Before we move any further, I wanna cover a lot of questions about the last video. A lot of you had questions about the second shot, whether or not it was a spider web I'm not saying that it wasn't. None of what I showed in the previous video was set up. If any of this stuff was staged, it wouldn't take me months to make a video. It would probably only take me a week. But because these events occur at random times, I'm kind of at the mercy of the events that go on. Because I did want to get a video out quicker than the last one, we tried to actively push the situation, which you'll see later on in the video. Whatever's out there, we provoked it. And I know that's not a very safe way to go about things, but I'm tired of waiting for answers as well. As for the spiderweb scene, a lot of you wanted to see the entire shot. And I'll show you some footage that I cut out of the last video. This thing, spirit, spiderweb, whatever you want to call it, was there as soon as the sun set. It was there for hours. 
My security cam doesn't go back that far, so I can't show you the entire night. What I can show you is what happened when I was out there. My security camera only lets me take anywhere between 30 seconds and 5 minute shots. And I can't replay the whole night because the hard drive only saves back one month. This is way before I ever thought about making a video. Regardless, here's a little clip of the video you didn't see. It flew away and didn't come back. Had I known better, I would have saved a five minute video clip, but I didn't know what I was dealing with. As for the coyote sounds in my driveway, a lot of people said that I dubbed my voice over the video because the background audio got really quiet as soon as I started talking, but that's not true. I did boost the background noise so that you could hear the coyotes or whatever was making that sound. Then I lowered the volume every time I spoke. I can debunk that here. This is the security cam footage and the sound with it. This is the moment I pulled my phone out and started recording. I don't know if you guys can hear this. I might have to look at the uh, security cam footage. But it sounded like... But it sounded like... Coyotes litter. I don't know if my phone's picking this up. I'll have to check the security cameras. Listen to that. It, it's all around. It, it's all around my house. A lot of hearsay country boys called me a city slicker and said that I'd never heard the sounds of the outdoors before. I was raised in the city, but I'm no stranger to the outdoors. Both sides of my family are from the Appalachian Mountains and Daniel Boone. My grandparents grew up in the mountains, lived off the land, in the middle of nowhere, just rolling hills and forest. I've been in the outdoors many, many times and never experienced anything like this. I've also encountered coyotes before, but as stated in the previous video, where these sounds were coming from, it was an impossibility. They were in areas where there were no field, and I scouted the area. I got right up on the sounds, and again, there was nothing there, and it freaked me out. Whatever's out there knows I'm looking for it. It does not like my cameras. This is not some dumb animal. This thing knows everything I'm doing. It's messing with me. Honestly, I question why I'm doing this. Maybe this is a bad idea, but I have to know. I'm more paranoid about not finding out what's causing all the events. I've never had any intentions of being a so-called paranormal investigator or a ghost hunter. This is not what I do. I'm a gamer. Shout out to everyone from the Outer Middle Show. I'm a comedian. This new channel wasn't supposed to be this. I feel as though I had no choice but to investigate what's been going on. But I guess if the shoe fits, I'll wear it. Summer, 2022. I needed a third party's perspective. So I decided to fly my friends down, Morgan and Snipper. I've never met them in person, but I've known them for seven years. They've been my companions on this YouTube journey of mine. And after seven years of hard work on my other channel, 
I needed a vacation, and they were eager to see what was going on. Fourth of July was right around the corner, and I was going to have some fun. It's my favorite day of the year. It's a day I take very seriously. I wanted to go all out, get out of my own head for a while, enjoy my success with people I can call true friends, and that's a rare thing to have. This world is full of a lot of bad things, things that we cannot explain. There are a lot of non-believers out there, and I feel like there's only one difference between the two. We pay attention, we question things. When something's off, we know it's off. It's something we can feel. I used to not believe in these things until I opened my eyes. I opened my eyes to the possibility and went too far. And now there's no going back. No way to shut it out. It's a door I wish I could close. But once it's opened, it's permanent. I wish I had ignored everything. And soon, you'll see why. After the best 4th of July I've ever had, it was time to get to work. Snipper and Morgan didn't have much time, so we decided to actively push the situation. We wanted to get something irrefutable. A couple weeks prior to the holiday, I decided to pick up some ghost hunting equipment. This is something I wasn't going to do at first. I don't necessarily believe in all the equipment that you see a lot of ghost hunters use, but I was thinking it couldn't hurt to try. So I picked up some EMF readers some micro-thermal cameras, electronic thermometers, and a talk box. We spent three days out in the field, every night for about six hours, and attempted to get any evidence we could. So we'll record everything. We can kind of see what we're doing. Yeah, that's a good shot. Oh, bro, look at it back there. I can't see back there. That's the point. And this is here. We go. Ready? I regret doing this shit. I don't. There's that same damn sound, dude. That ain't a bird, bro. It's moving. Give me that flashlight. Dude. Yeah, 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 take that flashlight. 
Oh, did you hear it? It moved way back there, dude. Oh my god, dude. Whatever that is, it's hopefully normal. Yeah, definitely point towards the exit. <laughs> that way, if you have to just slam the gas. Chill back here, I guess, for a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and kill this recording. And pick Are you up and towards that tree. Good. Whoa. Fuck that. Dude. Oh no, that scared no, the no, fuck no, out no. of me. Dude, nah. Nah. I know. Alright, so, tell you what. Let's sit back here in pitch dark. And let's sit for a minute. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, don't, because the last time you did, it called back. Yeah. I don't want nothing. I don't want to mock nothing. We stayed out in the field till late in the night. Didn't capture anything significant. Although, we did hear the sound of a bird bouncing in all different locations. It was the same sound from the first Skimwalker video. I don't know what this is. It could be nothing. It could just be birds communicating. I don't know. But for the most part, it was peaceful. So we geared up for night two. This is brighter than shit. Yeah. And like you were saying, we're only using those other cameras for close-up shots, so yeah. they don't need powerful IR lights on them. So, right. And this camera's got full charge, you said, right? Where's yeah, the that's what I pretty much going to use. Now, the microphones on these aren't going to be as good, obviously, as the big camera. So, is that the only camera that works? No, no, the camera's fine, it's the light. Yeah, so the lights are not working anymore, I don't know why. Camera is recording and infrared are going. So. Alright, cool. That should be all you need anyway for cab light. Yeah, but it's pissing me off that we got the light for nothing. <laughs> We're at the spot. We're gonna sit back here for quite some time. Hopefully we can monitor something. And then the next time we come up here, we're bringing all of the ghost hunting equipment. See if we can provoke or piss something off. I do feel the, the energy shifting a little bit, don't y'all? I don't know what it is. We just passed midnight. Did we? That's probably why. I felt the energy back here shift like crazy. Alright. We've been out here for a solid four to five hours. And we've heard some pretty strange things, but nothing groundbreaking. Tonight was somewhat of a bust. 
there are fireworks going off in the distance I don't know if that has anything to do with it but uh, I'm gonna have to come back out here next time we come back out here we're gonna bring some more equipment Night two was more peaceful than the first night. We came up empty-handed again. So the next day, we geared up for one more night before Snip and Morgan had to go back home. Only this time, we brought all the equipment. All right. We are at the site for the last night. It's supposed to rain the rest of the week, so we're not going to get a chance to do this. We've brought all the equipment, the talk box, and the EMF readers, the thermal camera. We're going to stay out here for quite some time. See if we can pick anything up. Maybe aggravate something. It is pitch black out here. Keep stepping on stuff. Now I'm about to try to piss it off. Whatever it is out there. It's been messing with me for months. Okay. Snip. Was that you? I know I caught that on camera. Are you seeing anything? Couldn't see anything. It was, but that was right close. there. We're basically trying to aggravate whatever it is out here. And we've been out here for three days, so we're gonna try to provoke it. If you're out here, can you answer me? Talking to my box. Is anybody out here? What was that? It said, who's that? Is there anybody out here? I, yeah, do that again. What was that? I don't like it. That sounded demonic. Do it one more time. But I swear to God, that first word that came out was please leave. I thought I heard that too, but I wasn't sure. I'm afraid to ask it if it's evil. Ask if they want us to leave. Do you want us to leave? Dude. That's not, definitely not a skinwalker. Where's the EMF? I got it. EMF? Yes. It's, where's the other EMF? It's stuck on one. Does it work? Yeah, so okay. it definitely works. Yeah. That was his ass cell phone. What did just say? Sound like it said no. I wish it was just clear. I wish you didn't have to guess. We'll have to listen to the audio back. Maybe. Maybe we need the other camera with the better mic. Maybe, yeah. You want to use that one instead? Let's use both. Good. Yeah, I'll hold this the other one. Here. It said get back. Yeah. They said, get back. I kind of don't want to be out here no more. I'm going to leave that running. I really kind of don't want to be out here no more. I don't know, man.
I don't know what to, I don't know what sense to make of it from what I've heard before hearing physical stuff and now that what I don't know what else to ask I don't like this thing I really don't I kind of regret buying it I'm telling you dude the closer we get every time the more stuff we hear It said wait no. Look at that tree. I'm not liking this bro. Now I almost don't want to sample it. Now that I know it's like it keeps saying like negative things. Yeah. Whoever that is, they don't want us here. That's what See that's right. Yeah, it did. Is it talking? Do you want us to leave? Come on. Said to run. Yeah, dude. Dude, I'm out. Yeah, I'm leaving. Fuck that. <laughs> yep, done. Um, I don't know what to do. Maybe sit here without that thing running? See if we can get an EMF? I mean, yeah. to be honest, we've been here for like two hours. Did that read anything? No, it's because I'm, I'm when you move it, it's... Right. Where's the other one? Uh, it's I have it. right here. You have it? Okay. You're talking about the EMF? Yeah. Oh, here. yeah. It's in your pocket. You want this? That reads temperature. Hold the top left button up here. That reads EMF and temperature. Very accurately. There's. I'll tell you this. There's no way I could have gotten that without you guys being here. There's no way that I would have been out here doing that by myself. I'm only brave to a certain point. Shoes are untied. How'd that happen? Yeah, I heard that. What? What's that? Boy, we sound like some cliche ghost hunters, don't we? I know, but seriously, what was that? I don't know. I haven't heard that yet, have you? That actually gave me goosebumps. I'm on edge right now. I am too. Let's keep going. Alright, let's try the EMF. Can you give me a sign on my reader? If you're here, give me a sign, please. You picking up anything? Temperature changes, anything? I don't feel any, it's still hot out here. I don't feel no temperature change like I did that one night. Let's try and go around. Yeah. That's how it was for me, man. It took me seven months. Some nights it's more active than others. Some nights are really, really, really bad. I think I got lucky that first video I made. Hearing what I heard. Three degrees? Where? Back here? My snip got a temperature change. It does kind of feel cool right here, don't it? Cooler. It's staying the same now. Weird. Went from 73.7 .7 to 70.6. And then, let's try that again. Can you give me a sign? Alright man. We're gonna make our way back to the golf cart. We didn't get any EMF. The only thing we've gotten so far is that talk box. Oh I just jumped. Jump? I just got an EMF. It was 1.2. Here? So we're getting small spikes of temperature and EMF. Oh, no, I'm near your camera, but I was far back. It went 1.2. Heavy activity is anything 2.5 and up. I wish we had a way to put that. Like I just got 1.9. No. Catch up on camera. Yeah, I'm moving until we see it. I was right here. I'm gonna back the camera up so it's not the camera doing it. Can you give us a reading? Anything? Oh, 
I'm tired of hearing stuff. 1.9. Right, right here. I got it. I got it. I got it. So we got some mild EMF. Definitely some spray. What, what, what did it come up to? 1.9 again. Wow. Okay. Right here, right under the tree. Literally. We call this the witch's tree because it is an ancient tree, you can tell. But any tree like this always has some kind of a history. Kind of don't want to know what that is. Thanks for, thanks for picking up. Yeah, can we go back to the golf cart? Yeah, we can go back to the golf cart. I got a feeling, man. The later we stay out here, the worse it gets. Yeah. Maybe we should stay at, what time is it? Let's go check the time. It's up to 75. It's going up? Yeah, it's dropping now. 12.45. We've been hearing stuff for about 45 minutes. It was 0 0.1. Dude, um, you know what they say? 3 a.m. is the time. I know. Hot time is from 12 to 3. And that's when all that stuff happened to me was 3 o'clock. Remember that? Oh, yeah, I do. That was in the video. 3 o'clock is when stuff really hits the fan. I kind of don't want to stay out here that long, but I do. So we got mild EMF and we got talk box activity. So I'm thinking what we're dealing with mm, may not be a skinwalker. I honestly don't know what it is. I don't have a clue. Uh, any suggestions would be nice. I think whatever is out here isn't nice. I don't think it's demonic. But it ain't nice. If it doesn't want us around. Exactly. It's to run. Yeah, yeah. It told us to run. What else did it say? We'll have to go back and watch it. Turn that back on. Man, I don't want to. Might as well. See if it has anything else to say. All right. You got one more chance to talk to us. You got one more chance to talk to us. Are you angry with us? That hell, dude, I've heard it. Come on, give us something clear. I'm getting bad chills right now. Come on, clear, give us something clear. I'm gonna run that talk box. I'm gonna set it down and I'm just gonna let it run without asking any questions. That way, we know whether or not it's bull crap. I don't know if maybe me holding it had something to do with it. I touched the antenna. Are you here? Dude, it wasn't making a sound. Are you angry? No. I said go or no? I don't know. It probably said go. Are you here? Okay, said die. Can we get out? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. No. Okay. We're leaving. Yeah. I told you, man. It wasn't making a sound up there when we wasn't when we weren't talking. Are you missing anything? I don't. A little bugged out by that. I can't wait to get back and uh, kind of see what was, man, dude. Oh, I don't, I can't explain that. Some kind of pattern we're not picking up on. So the third night was much different than the previous nights. There were a lot of sounds all around us, talk box activity, and EMF. Most of this activity occurred when we approached what we call the witch's tree. You can tell it's a very, very old and ancient tree. 
It's definitely got some history behind it. We agitated this thing to the point where we didn't want to go any further. The atmosphere that night over time got worse and worse. My stomach started to turn. Snip and Morgan were feeling sick and we had had enough. Throughout the day we had played with that talk box and got zero activity. We went outside and walked around and we thought it was broke or maybe defective. We even played with it after the fact and got nothing. I mentioned that I didn't think we were dealing with a skimwalker and we'll touch on that in a bit. What we were dealing with definitely wasn't nice and I feel as though we agitated it. It kept telling us to leave and then eventually told us to die and again I don't know what to make of this. I'm still just as confused as when this whole thing started. After Snip and Morgan left, I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to go back there by myself again, so I took a break. I decided to do some research. There was nothing specific that I could find on the history of this area. I did, however, study native tribes, where the skinwalkers originated, and if there could possibly be any connection. The skinwalkers originated from the Navajo, a tribe that didn't enter this area. Kentucky was mainly populated by the Shawnee, Cherokee, and the Chickasha. So I'm not entirely sure if a skimwalker is known in this area. But after reading more deeply, I found a skimwalker takes on various forms across tribes. Again, mostly in Navajo lore. It's a kind of wicked sorcerer who can transform into, occupy, or disguise themselves as an animal. The myth behind this shapeshifter being known as the skimwalker has mostly been consigned the label of either a hoax, too much peyote, or simply oral traditions transfixed to a culture's belief. But nevertheless, the skimwalker has deep roots in Aboriginal American folklore. A lot of tribes believe that skimwalkers are produced when a medicine man abuses magic for evil, or when they corrupt the natural order of things. The medicine man, now an entity for evil, becomes like a Sith Lord. He or she is given awesome powers by the pollution. These powers differ from tradition. A few things this malicious transformation does have through all tribes is that a skimwalker possesses command over other beasts and they have the ability to turn into different animals and the capacity to possess others from their tribe. In other traditions, a person, man, woman, or child becomes a skimwalker when they perform any kind of deep-seated taboo and it's kind of similar to the Wendigo curse. And upon further investigation, they're reportedly near impossible to kill. Some traditions state bullets, knives, or spears dipped in white ash might kill a skinwalker. But all tribes say the same thing. You do not talk about skinwalkers. Widespread belief in tribal custom warns that talking about wicked beings is not only bad luck, but somehow calls out to them and makes their appearance all the more likely. And with that, little, if anything, is really known about the skinwalker. Navajo are hesitant to discuss their boogeyman with outsiders. So if this is a skimwalker, what am I doing? Because I couldn't get any evidence on paper, I needed to find proof that there were Native Americans in the area at one point. And that meant finding something that they maybe left behind. Something they had in abundance. If I could find this one thing, it would prove their activity in the area. That one thing is arrowheads. Most arrowhead hunters hunt for Indian artifacts in the fall and winter because vegetation in the late summer is thick and overgrown. So even though it would be next to impossible to find anything in the overgrowth, I'm going to keep my eye out and really dig in during the fall and winter. The entire month of July, we had a problem with our security system. None of the cameras worked, and we called tech support every other day to no avail. They had no clue what was causing the cameras to malfunction. They replaced half of our equipment and it still wouldn't function correctly. And then out of nowhere, on August 1st, the camera started working again. All right guys, I'm gonna try to explain this in the best way that I can. Uh, after Snip and Morgan left, our security cameras have not been operational for some reason. We've called tech support with, with no luck. Um, they're just as confused as we are. They came out, they replaced some of our equipment, still didn't work, so they gave us a rebate for the month. Now, out of nowhere, it was August 1st, I believe, I was just randomly checking the cameras, and they worked. 
all of them. Uh, it is now the 2nd of August, and I noticed my dog Charlie was going absolutely insane at the back fence. I walked outside via the side of the house because I, it kind of sounded like the barks were coming from my driveway. Because Charlie, he doesn't bark a lot. Charlie is a very conservative dog. He's very smart. Uh, he doesn't just bark for no reason. We, our neighbors have a dog, and he's a big dog, and he doesn't even bark at him. Now, Teddy, Teddy's the type that, you know, he barks if he hears the slightest thing. We have a third dog, and she's almost 16 years old. We bought her a long time ago, gave her to my girlfriend's granny, and then she has recently passed away. So we have, we have three dogs. And again, Charlie, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't bark. He never barks at anyone coming in the house. He doesn't bark when people are delivering packages. He's just, he's just a good dog. Regardless, last night, heard a lot of barking, went out the side of my house where my garage is and noticed that it was Charlie going nuts at the back fence. So I walked out there, he came to me, just, he seemed off. He seemed scared and so did Teddy. So I, I took him in and I kind of just, you know, looked around, didn't hear or see nothing. So I thought, I don't know, maybe it was a rabbit. I don't know. I didn't know. So I checked the security cam footage and I found something really weird. So I had that pulled up on my phone and I'm going to play it for you guys in, in real time. I'm not going to make any cuts while I'm filming this. And it seems as though something is selectively turning off my cameras. Never had this happen before ever. Let me see. Let me see if I can show you this on my phone. As you can see down here, this is the timeline of the video last night. It was roughly 10 o'clock. And it's August, set, well, it says Tuesday. Okay, all my dogs right now are on the back porch. Let's hit play. Let me turn it up. There's a cricket that's absolutely loud, but you can hear what sounds like growling or barking. And then it cuts off. I don't know if you guys picked that up, but there was a pretty terrible sound on the camera, and it wasn't Charlie. It wasn't the neighbor's dog. I, I don't know what it was. So without cutting this video during the gaps, we're just going to let the gaps play, and maybe I'll fast forward them. back off okay this is about the moment Charlie and Teddy are just going nuts. That white dot is when the camera detected me. Okay, here we go. You can see me in the backyard. Charlie comes up to me. He's freaked out. 
I don't know if you can see it, but he was hunkered down when he was walking over to me. And also, as you can see before and after this event, there was no obstruction to the video. That cricket is extremely loud and annoying. He immediately wanted to go in. So then I just kind of walked in the backyard. That's when the camera detected me and was just kind of confused. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, that, that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Something isn't right. Charlie was acting weird. When I told him to come to me, he came over to me with his tail down and huddled down at my feet. I'd never seen him act like this before. Teddy seemed a bit shaken up too. I didn't want whatever caused them to freak out to happen again, so I didn't let him back out the entire night. Because the cameras were working again, I wanted to get back on schedule of checking the cameras nightly. And the next night, I found this. You can see another apparition or spider web floating in my backyard. My cat is extremely skittish. My cat rarely lets people pet him and he runs even on the side of me. He's not a very sociable cat, but this thing, whatever it is, is there again, the exact same way it happened in the first video. And again, my cameras cut off. There was no feed for another 10 minutes. And when the security camera started recording again, it was gone. I needed to know if this was a spider web. I was fed up with guessing. These things that happen around my house are always at random moments. So when they do happen, I'm always caught off guard. And this is one of the reasons why it takes me so long to come out with one of these videos is because I can't set a time frame for when I feel like I gather enough evidence to put a video out. What I needed to do was debunk this spiderweb thing for myself. I knew I needed to get a second camera on it. I now own tons of infrared cameras. I needed to catch this thing in real time. And that's hard for me to do because I'm extremely busy. But if I could get a second camera on this phenomenon, I would know whether or not it's a spiderweb or something else obstructing the camera. After what I've experienced, I don't ever want to go out in the fields at night again. At least not alone. So I thought maybe, if Charlie's already sent something out there, maybe he can help. If only I could catch something happening in real time, I could use him to maybe help track it down. Charlie is unlike any dog I've ever raised. He is by far the smartest animal I've ever been around. Teaching him tricks is accomplished in minutes and he always remembers. But he's also the most emotional dog I've ever been around. He thinks he's human. When he looks you in the eyes, it's as though he's looking straight into your soul, and he hates being alone. We bought him from a distant family member, and his parents were raised in the country. We heard stories about his father, and it's one of the main reasons we wanted to raise him. 
His father loved the water. He would jump in lakes and ponds. They said he was fearless, a true family dog. He's been a blessing and a true friend. Charlie's going crazy. Charlie, come here, Bobby. Come here. Are you okay? No, 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 no. I gotta turn the night vision on. There we go. Charlie, buddy, are you okay? Are you okay? Charlie, sit. Sit, buddy, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay, Bobby, it's okay. Come on. Come on, Bobby. Charlie. Charlie. Get over here. I gotta find his leash. Hang on, buddy. Hang on, hang on. My heart is pounding. Quit. Come on. I have lost his leash. There it is. You can hear Teddy in the backyard still going off. Come on, Charlie. Come on. Come on, Bubby. Come on, let's get him. Come on, Bubby. It's okay. Come on. It's okay. Come on. I gotta set this down. Come on. Come on, Bubby. It's okay. It's okay. Come here. Come here. It's okay, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. He is shook up. Come on, puppy. Come on, this way, buddy. It's okay. It's okay, come on. Calm down, calm down. Come on. Calm down. My heart is pounding. Teddy's still going nuts. I'm going back there. And I'm going to see what the hell this is. I'm sick of this. You can hear Teddy in the distance to get to the field. We're going to have to wrap around the neighborhood. There's no way to get back there. Unless you go through my fence, and I ain't going through my fence. Oh my god. Charlie, come on, Bubby. Come on, this way. Shh, oh my god. I can't see It's okay, it's okay. What do you say, buddy? He's scared. 
I'm scared. Oh my god, Ted. Charlie, come on. Charlie, come on. Come on. Come on, puppy. I can't see. I can't see to get back there. Something just moved through the bushes. And I'm and I think it's going back the other way. Teddy is still flipping out. Come on. Come on, Charlie. What do you see? Get back, Charlie. Oh my god!